Music was playing. Think of the church where nobody's playing. Never the past. In a picture of me without you. Cargan, nothing was growing. Nothing was flowing. Looked up at the sky with no blue. Seen a picture of me without you. You've ticked your heaven, no angel slinging. In the morning, no church bells ringing. Long as I heart of child, but who? You've seen a picture of me without you. you. George Jones. George Jones. Bless his heart. <laughs> That's a good one, but I can't sing it. Johnny Gimbal. Huh. Slowly by, he prayed upon his mind on his wall. All right. I guess we have to get going. And for train to come in shame. Sinatra, you're not. Man is out of name. This was all adios was all she said. I knew it had to be. But she finally spoke Spanish to me. <laughs> ah. All right. Sorry about that. Um, no, I'm not Sinatra. That's for sure, Lou. <laughs> but then again, he's not Sinatra anymore either. God. Well, yeah, I'm going to let him know. 
that I'm on, but I just wanted to, um, Avid's hating ZJYL. Well, let's talk about it a bit. Um, uh, that is what makes a market. Somebody can hate it. The charts probably look bad. Let me look. Let me look. <clears throat> I mean, I'm, he's a much better chartist than I am. And he knows the computers are set up to trade on chart, chart points. Um, the chart... I should probably print out. Why don't I do that? I'll print it out. Go get it. And I'll give you my thoughts on the chart for ZJYL. I can't find the print button. They've changed it. They have changed this. They've improved it, but I cannot find... Where are you print? Maybe you put it in a bigger screen. No, I might not be able to print it. So let's not get, let's not get all excited about me being able to show this to you. Share chart, print chart. See, they just changed. They just changed how you have to hit the buttons. Okay, I'll go get it, uh, David, and uh, I will show you what I think about, I'll show you what I think in my amateur way. I would listen to Avid. Uh, I mean, in one way, he's, a little late to call it, uh, as you say, hating on it. Um, who was that singer? She had a great song. Uh, is it Jill Scott? Jill Scott has the song Hate On Me. It's a great song. Um, all right, my computer is just too slow. All right, so let me just go get that, David. I'll be, well, let me, let me see. Maybe I can put this up while I'm gone. Uh, no. Okay, I'll be right back. Let's see what that young man is talking about. Uh, in my way, I will tell you what I think. That's not good. That one I think is good. That one is good. Let me get a pencil. Um, what else is good here? That doesn't give us, that's not good. Uh, <laughs> that's not particularly good. I'll show you, I'll show you that. That's not exciting to see. All right, and how about this one? Uh, Have you ever seen a puppy dog sadder than lucky? All right, I don't see much here. Well, let me put this here because that's where it broke down. All right, so David... Let me see this quickly. Let me 
Let's see if this has come up. Nope. You seen the picture of me without you. So anyway, David, here's the chart of ZJYL. And here, see this line here? This sort of pennant here? This is where it broke down. This is where it broke down. And the selling came in. Now I see a line here from this low through to here that could be support, but uh, it's got only two points on it. One here, you know for sure. You don't know that this is the low, but what gives you that sense is that it's this moving average it's bouncing off of. So I can see what um, Avid is seeing. This line here, <laughs> that's not a good line, this one right here. That, that could be where the stock, I mean, that's probably support. If support at the, see this red right here, at the 50-day moving average doesn't hold. Sorry, that's the 200-day moving average. So it's even better, 200-day moving average. I think it's going to hold there, though. So anyway, David, I I can see why he's um, looking at it uh, negatively on a chart basis. On the other hand, I, I like this support line. I like the 200-day moving average, and I like the action yesterday. Uh, I can I can see Avid's point. Um, now, let me tell you why I think he's wrong, fundamentally wrong, but I could, you know, doesn't mean he is wrong. Charts tend to tell you what's happening. All right, let me just see. I want to show you guys something. My computer is very slow, so I'll go. Let me look here. Uh, have you ever been to heaven where there's no angel singing? All right, I uh, do not see it, what I want to show you. Oh, there it is, 0242, 0242, 0242, 0242, 024, oh, they don't even have it. 0242 is not even up here, 0242. Hmm. There it is. Let's see if it'll open. It won't open. So we'll wait a little longer. Uh, everything's freezing, David. Sorry. So anyway, what I think's happening with ZJYL is they, let me see where the stock price is. It's about 320. Let me get a let me get a current quote. And it looks like I have to sign in, so sorry. I was signed in. Just have to get my Okay. Um, anyway, 
So there's <coughs> All right, I give up for the time being. I give up for the time being. Um, so anyway, the last trade is 318. It's down five cents. The volume is 373. David, I didn't expect, and I think I told you guys yesterday, I didn't expect any particular action in ZJYL today. But the float, and this uh, Avid can't see that in this chart. He can say the chart gives you all the information you need. That's what a technician does. Technician says the chart tells you everything. Well, it really doesn't. But if you had gotten out there, you would have saved this. And my, I imagine he's telling you it can fall down to here or even a little bit lower. So he doesn't see a reason to buy it. But that's what the chart might be saying to you. I think there's a pretty large uh, triangle there. This movement here in this one day, I don't think his chart predicted that. I'm not making fun of him. I'm just saying charts don't predict this. Charts don't predict that. And I would argue that this chart did not predict this either. Here, yeah. It broke down. But anyway, um, David, there are 21,600,000 shares in the float of ZJYL. This group of guys owns that a little bit more than that float. And they requested, as you know, they requested to have a big chunk of that, a little bit more than half of that, delivered as physical uh, certificates. I don't know when that's going to happen, but that's been in process for a while at IBKR. And they got lawyers to insist on it. So the float is going to go from 21,600,000 down to let's call it let's call it uh 10 million cuz i i believe they're asking for 12 million shares to be delivered so you're going to go down to a float of 10 million with one group owning 22 million shares I think it's got all the uh, ingredients for a squeeze. But if you want to go by the charts, oh, darling, oh, Kate Middleton has cancer. I could have had my picture with her one time. She was standing as far as, you know, if you were if you're standing at your stove, you could look at your refrigerator. That's how far. That's probably a little too close. She was standing uh the width, the space of maybe five people, four people from me. And she was going into a tent, but her little dog, her little sausage dog had escaped and she was running after it. And she just had such a smile. Um, she was so warm with everybody. She has cancer. Oh, God bless her. God bless her. Diagnosed with cancer at age 42. Uh, 
having William by my side is a great source of comfort and reassurance. <coughs> they don't say what it is. Oh, God bless her. God bless her. Hmm. Acid seemed to have made a 180% counter movement change. I don't know. I haven't spoken to him in a while. I think he was always an honest guy. Um, uh, well, they yeah, the short position, David, you're exactly right. The rumor was it was 10 million. And um, obviously, the boo birds say, well, you can't prove that. Well, I think you can prove it. Uh, that it happened, this kind of thing happens. Look at MMTLP. So anyway, yeah, that's the other part of it. Uh, how many haven't been targeted? Um, by the way, Scott and everybody else on GTII, I called in today to follow up on my filling out the forms to get my dividend shares unrestricted. <coughs> and the previous guy told me all I had to do was take a picture and upload it, which I relayed to you. Well, I need to tell you here a week, uh, 10 days, seven days later, um, from that conversation that I had, uh, I called in to check. And the new guy said, no, you need to mail those pages in. So I just did that. But so I guess that's my main message. If you're trying to get your shares unrestricted, you have to fill out the stock power and the rest of the questionnaire and mail it in. I flew home from Antigua on. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. <coughs> I'm sorry. Oh. Her, her sister was in that one year, the rear of the year, very beautiful uh, pictures of her. Uh, Avid was a fan of yours until he got enough subscribers. Well, I don't know if he's not a fan of mine. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, here's what I think, Scott. When you ha ask somebody to read charts, and you can have more than one technician in your in your um, stable, so to speak, but if you're relying on a technician, you got to get to know that technician. And what you don't want a technician to do is give his fundamental views because he doesn't know what he's talking about fundamentally in most situations. You don't want him, let's say that uh, a company has sponsored him to talk about a stock. You don't want him saying, oh, well, I think you should buy it just because he got, you know, some sort of uh, benefit. And you don't want him making things up. What you do want is that he's consistent and that when he sees a chart pattern, he calls it as he sees it. That becomes information that you can rely on. Doesn't mean he's always right, but it means, okay, I understand the situation with ZJYL. Over 200 million shares short. The float is owned by one small group of people. The float is going to be reduced by half here at some point. And not only do those whales not intend to sell, my understanding is they intend to buy more. So you've got a situation where, that has everything necessary to show pressure on a prime broker. And then perhaps other computers start buying as the stock price goes up. And perhaps there's a buy in. <coughs> so that's not reflected in the chart. And you wouldn't expect Avid as a chart guy 
to say to you, hey, this is what I'm hearing, so don't pay attention to the chart. You don't call Avid for that. You call Avid for how he sees the chart. And I can see why, you know, this line I drew here, it doesn't have to mean a thing. Because if this goes lower, I could just draw a line from, from a lower point. So all I'm saying is, Scott, when you find a technician that you trust and you get to know how they think, you can make money trading off of their recommendations. And I think Avid's one of those guys. I think he's um, – uh, what's the word? I think he sticks to his guns, and um, he. I think he's good at, at reading the charts. I think Ark is good at reading the charts. There's a couple of people on here that are very good at reading them. For me, I, I admit that I'm more of a fundamental person player, but uh, I do look at charts, and I wish I traded off of them more. Um, but for ZJYL, I think you're – look, I may be just hoping, but I think next week's going to be a good week for ZJYL. That's too bad for Kate. That is too bad for Kate. It really is. I'm sorry for Kate Middleton. I wonder if, uh, I wonder if, uh, can't show you that. All right. So let's go. I'll, I'll, uh, go through some of these comments and then I'll uh, at 2.30 I'll let Ham know he can come on. What's this? Uh, just found Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, they're not always they're not always uh, right. Um Uh, dividend conversion to common shares. Um, I didn't know there's a specific date for all this. I just this morning got off the phone with E-Trade and they gave me, as far as I'm concerned, one of the guys, whether it was the guy today or the last guy, gave me the runaround. I don't think they have the the stock to deliver, but we'll see. I, I went up and mailed the paperwork before I came live. I don't think the dividend's going to do anything to GTII. You've got to get the stock price up so that it that it is costing somebody a lot of money. And I think the reason the stock price will go up is if um alpine goes down and whoever's in charge of alpine right now buys in that large position that was was talked about in court um i think uh uh i'm not a lawyer but i don't see any my experience in courtrooms you can just as far as I'm concerned, my life would have been better if I had never had to go in a courtroom. But my experience in courtroom is everything takes time and time. And just when you think you can't stand it, it takes more time. So we'll see. We'll see. Well, that's a good point, aren't I? <laughs> With with manipulation, you can't predict it. I think Gerald Salente said that. You can't project anything. Everything is rigged. Everything is rigged. And, of course, the guy at E-Trade had to hear my view on that this morning. Uh, 
all Mexican. Yes, I'm very trying. How much longer for the squeeze of finger and GTII? Um, I don't think you're going to see a squeeze in either one very soon. Um, I think finger, there will be news soon. Um, if I had to guess, um, the end of March is a good time frame. That's next week for for news. Um, if you're an investment bank or if you're a, a fund who manages other people's money, or if you're a uh, you know a company perhaps that that's doing business quarterly at least in the United States, quarterly milestones are important. So anyway, I think in the case of Finger that finally the three or four or five things that could be news that we've talked about, maybe one or two of them come as soon as next week. Now, does that start a squeeze? I don't think so. Could it, could it build up pressure? and get the stock to go from two to five or six? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, <clears throat> a squeeze requires, in my judgment, a buy-in somewhere. And the, the sellers who are the clients of Lynn Partners, and if there's any CEOs out there, please, you can contact me, you can contact him, there's others you can contact, but don't do a financing with the Lynn Partners. Every single company that does financing with Lynn Partners, and they'll say, oh, it's not, it's not us. But every single company's uh, market cap gets destroyed. If you want to do business with Jeff Easton, just go fill out the paperwork to be a greeter at Walmart. It, it's a better job for you. You'll get more. You'll get more satisfaction out of that job than being a slave to the slave master Jeff Easton. This is not debt that you're signing up for. This is <coughs> slavery. Anyway, it's all in my judgment, but I think the evidence is out there on dozens of companies. And his sidekick, Philip Vallier, comes along. We're so excited to be part of this growth story. And then down, down, down. It's like that horrible movie with uh, with uh, Don Rickles and uh, <coughs> Rhett Butler in it. It's just, you know, that submarine movie. Down, dive, dive. Um, anyway, so I think finger, you could get some upward movement in finger over the next few weeks. I don't expect a squeeze to happen. GTI, I don't see a squeeze happening soon. Um, but I don't know, um, in both, you, as Ham always says, they don't ring a bell. They do not ring a bell when it happens, but the triggers, it hasn't changed for GTII. If the FBI or the Secret Service arrested the Kramers, and maybe the Kramers are already working with them, or arrested somebody that they recommend, that would send the stock higher. If Alpine gets expelled from NASDAQ, that could send it higher. If uh, 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 the court, throws these cases out. Alpine's sitting there with a large short position, unless somehow they've moved it, but a buy-in on that could get it going. Um, uh, the FBI separately is going after those guys at PacWest, uh, whoever sold through PacWest and left PacWest with a $6 million loss. In the meantime, the criminals sell without fear because your congressman, 
your senators, your president, your financial institutions are not there for you. They gather my they quote unquote gather assets, charge a fee, and their criminality allows them to expand assets under management and they get bigger fees. You are the sucker. So am I. I'm the sucker. And um, um, it's not going to change. So I just, I I don't see a squeeze coming in. BB, I thought there was a squeeze in GTII a little over a year ago. But for some reason, everyone thought it was best to go to Cosmo, C-O-S-M. That guy took $35 million out of the market. And he's set for his retirement. He can travel the world. He can sit smoking his jetons in uh, in uh, cities from Rome to Paris to Athens, Corfu, wherever the hell he wants to, because he's set for life. <coughs> but the stock was at nine dollars and headed higher. But. For some reason, as a group, we decided that wasn't good enough. So now the stock is 30 cents, and I just don't see it squeezing from 30 cents. It needs to build up momentum, needs to get to two, needs to get to three, needs to get to four, needs to get to six, needs to get to nine, and then you could have your squeeze. But we're nowhere near that yet. But BB, that doesn't mean that I'm right. You could see a squeeze in any one of these next week. All you need is one back office person to say, you know what? We're buying it in. There's no evidence there's a single person willing to take that risk because Gary Gensler's direction is just continue to hide the problem, ignore it, continue to cheat, continue to break the law. Because I, as Gary Gensler, I don't want anything on my watch. I want to be Secretary of Treasury when the single most popular president in the history of the United States is reelected. I don't know about that, Nakid. Um, uh, I don't have in my memory box uh, all the symbols, but there's something like 20 stocks out of Southeast Asia or the buyers out of Southeast Asia that did have a squeeze and quite impressive ones over the last <clears throat> two or three years. So I don't agree with you. There can be a squeeze. But I, I do think that it's a tough, tough battle. The criminals, I, I'm just so, I you know, I'm actually bored with the story now. I don't think we can change a thing. Uh, MMTLP, I think we can change it because there will be evidence. Um, but There's a guy that worked at the Amex. He's an honest man. And he believes that ham is full of shit. He thinks that uh, GTII, there's no short position. Because you can't just add up the, the um, naked selling and the counterfeiting numbers that you can get off the screen, or you, you well, I used to keep track of them, uh, from FINRA. Why? Because according to him, FINRA reports the short sale numbers, but FINRA doesn't have the computer capacity to report when the shares are covered. So they just only report that these trades were entered essentially naked short. Um, 
but they don't bother reporting that they were covered or anything. That's his opinion. And uh, so in that case, there would be no short short squeeze on anything. Uh, he feels that way about Finger as well. He feels that way about uh, Logic and about CAUD in general. I mean, he in the case of Logic, uh, he, I think, believes there's real shorts in it. <coughs> but you can't really know the number. But to him, what goes on is algorithmic trading. And there's a lot of people out there. What is algorithmic trading? It's just computers with an algorithm. As soon as the stock hits, as soon as the stock hits, uh, you know, whatever that says, 750, that's a sell signal, start selling all day long. Now, where I have a huge disagreement with him, because he just, he's fine with it. If you're a hedge fund, or if you're a big fund, or if you're a family office, if you're a good client, you can sell stock without locating it to him. Oh, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. You can't do anything about it. They're good customers. They deliver. So you get with the reg show exemption, the market maker exemption, these, the dog ate my homework guys, these excuses allow naked selling downward and no one cares. No one. So you can say there's no squeeze anywhere, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know off the top of my head, some of these other symbols like, uh, <clears throat> oh, all those Chinese ones, Southeast Asian ones. It ran 20 times, 30 times, a, a thousand times. Squeezes do happen. Why do it, why does a squeeze happen if it breaks out and a prime broker is losing money? If a prime broker is losing money and other computers start buying, that prime broker will buy in. Now, if this guy at Amex is correct and there's no short position, I don't know where he gets it from. He doesn't study GTII. He doesn't study finger particularly. But he he might be, if he's right, there's zero, little to none short position. Well, then you're right. Maybe there's no squeeze anywhere. I personally, having watched Finger and, and GTII, listening to Ham's analysis, I, I don't see any evidence that the stock has been bought back in. In the case of GTII, in black and white, in a court filing, the government or, or an agency that's quasi-government put in writing that Alpine is deficient because of a large short position in GTII. But if you want proof, Nikid, I don't think you can find it. You gotta, you gotta say, why did AMC go up? Why did GME go up? Why did GTII go to nine? Why did Finger go to 17? I don't know. Don't know what to tell you. Um, but if you if you believe, Nikki, if you believe that there's no short squeeze anywhere, don't be in these stocks. Because the, most of these stocks, most of them, Finger is an exception. Finger is a beautiful fundamental story. But there's some other good fundamental stories too in the ones we've talked about. But most of these stocks, the reason to own them is because of a large naked short position, counterfeit share position. But if you don't believe that, you shouldn't be in these stocks.
because that's huge risk. That's huge risk. If you don't believe that there's the potential to make 10 to 20 to 30 times your money in a squeeze because of a buy-in, you shouldn't be in most of these stocks. You just should not buy them. Um, I would recommend, unfortunately, the same manipulation goes on there. But if you if you're if you're uh, feeling like darn it, I put this money in. I wanted to make a lot of. I wanted to make money. And if you're saying I shouldn't because I don't believe in it, what am I going to do? Get five percent at the bank? <clears throat> Buy Nvidia at a thousand? What am I going to do? Well, I have a suggestion for you. Buy physical silver. Buy physical silver. It is as manipulated as the rest of the markets. There, there are, there's enormous illegal activity happening in the silver markets. The difference is when they reprice gold, silver will follow. And you could have a, a squeeze in silver. I think you can make 20, 30, 40, 100 times your money on silver. But <laughs> remember this also. That's if you measure your wealth in dollars. So by saying that silver is going to go up in dollar terms, what's the flip side? It means dollars are losing their purchasing value. So um, at somewhere your brain has to make a switch, for a while anyway, to seeing your wealth in terms of what your assets, which are near money, can acquire. Right now, silver can't acquire very much. But if you own silver and it goes to one to one with gold, which is my projection, and it, I'm not the only one, but I, I don't, I think I know one other person saying that. But I think one ounce of silver will be worth one ounce of gold in the future. At that point, you, you might be able to go buy a real a whole building for 10, 10 ounces of silver because there's so much desperation out there. You might be able to go buy a farm for 100 ounces of silver. And that is how I would look at that wealth, not as, well, my silver's worth $10,000 an ounce. Well, the dollar might be like the like the um, Venezuelan Bolivia or whatever it's called, or the the Argentinian peso or the Zimbabwe buffalo. I don't know. Well, Stony is is coming in as an expert in crypto, and he's saying buy crypto. By KAS. I don't know anything about it. Well, I've asked Ham that, Mark, and he laughs at me. But I, I think you may have a point. I think you may have a point. Well, MMTLP, by the way, I'm having a really hard time getting my last, whatever it is, 1,400 shares out of MMTLP. So I really recommend that each of you try to get your shares out. I, I sense that we're coming to an end there. But uh, I think you're going to be happy that you made that trade for MMTLP. Um, energy is something if the dollar comes down if maybe it won't but if the dollar loses a lot of purchasing power energy oil natural gas uh the products that energy creates will maintain their value vis-a-vis -vis other goods and services in society whatever the currency is so i think you're gonna be happy in mmtlp 
what can we do with MMTLP? Well, right now, all you can do with MMTLP is ask your brokerage firm to move your shares to AST that you want um, uh, NextBridge Hydrocarbons physical shares. Now they're going to say, we have to send it to you. Fine, fine. They will set up an account automatically with you at the transfer agent. Last year, as soon as they it left my account, before I received it, I called in and it was there was a record of it. But I am having trouble getting my last shares out. So it might be too late at E-Trade. I don't know, but it, it could be. But right now, what you can do is move your MMTLP out of your brokerage firm into NextBridge. And I strongly, that is without a doubt what you should do. I can see no reason to leave your shares to the whim of, of Wall Street, the whims of Wall Street. So, the whims and wimps of Wall Street. You have money. Good for you. <laughs> That's a nice situation to be in. Are they charging me? Yeah, they charged me $60. And... Um, uh, when they first, you know, last year, when I first signed up for it, it was some ridiculous amount. I want to say five or $600, something. And I said, no, I said, that's ridiculous. And I went through my, you know, my, everything I've said here. And then the next time I called in, they said they do it for, I can't remember 90 or 100 but when i went to do it it was free that's my memory this time it's 60 dollars, and i paid it i paid it um i think anything in the 60 to 100 dollar range you can write off in your mind as you know two two fedex payments one to the transfer agent, one back to you, or one to, you know, I don't know. I think it's worth it. I would pay the money. Now, if they're charging you 500, I wouldn't, I would get upset. <laughs> Scott. Hey, Jennifer. Ah. Uh, Stoney, I think you should move to AST. Um, I believe I'm getting the runaround from E Trade, so we might have run out of time. But I, I, I would be the squeaky wheel. I'd be the one that keeps asking. They must have some shares to still give out, and I think you're going to be in a lot better position with those shares than without. Yeah, Julie, I I think I uh, forget who said buy crypto. Maybe it was Stony. I can't remember, but I think Wolf is a tremendous um, stock to own. Look, Yorkville Advisors is a long in the long list of these Wall Street pretenders um, who just destroy market caps. And you only have to look at a company like Northwest Bio, who has a proven, approved uh, drug or whatever therapy, and the stock's down. Why? Because the 
initial financing gave cover to just put an avalanche of stock. It became a bloodbath. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He said bloodbath. Anyway, it's over a billion shares. And they still have the power to keep that stock down because there's so many shares. But what could rescue Northwest Bio is if one of the big pharmaceutical companies comes in and just takes over the company? What if two of them get in a bidding war? Then you, you could see Northwest Bio sell for 50 bucks a share, 80 bucks a share. That's what I think could happen to Wolf. Wolf, at some point, there, there might be a fund, there might be a, uh, a mining, I don't know what to call it, a mining company that goes around buying up other mining companies. I think that's ultimately what will happen with, with Wolf. And it'll reflect its true value, which is much, much higher than where it is now. But they got crushed with financing. There's more shares out than the last time the stock was 20. I think ZJYL will go first. I agree with you. Um, I don't see this overall stock market crashing. I, th I, 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 I'm confused with the economy. Every house here that's listed sells in two days. One theory I have is there's a lot of very powerful, smart, well-paid women here in DC and they want to own homes and, and, uh, they buy them. Uh, so that might be unique to DC. Um, but that's, that's a signal that the economy is strong. I don't know, but I think the stock market, let's measure it by the S and P. I think it's going to go to six or 7,000. And the Dow's going to go much higher. I think you're going to be astonished how much higher the stock market goes. Even if the economy sucks. Be why? What's the biggest reason? The single most popular president in the history of the United States is going to be reelected if they have anything to do with it. Um, I would, I'm trying to remember what I heard about fidelity. I'm really, you know, look, there, there may be arguments to sit on your hands and do nothing, but I really recommend, and yesterday I was, I was unfair to Bill Cooper probably, but it wasn't, really that I was frustrated with Bill Cooper. It's just that I get frustrated with people feeling like one, they they're not they've lost all their money. I think that's an, an unfair thing to do to your psyche because you haven't in MMTLP. And number two, I think it's unfair to yourself to not take action and move MMTLP, which is nothing. There's nothing. MMTLP is a chit. There's no management. There's no assets. There's no cash flow. There's no income. There's no earnings. There's no hope of earnings. There's no shell. It's not even a shell company. There's nothing. The only thing MMTLP has going for it right now is you can convert it into one share of Nextbridge per share. As soon as you can't do that anymore, what does MMTLP really represent? 
a claim. And if you don't have the money and, and no one of you would, I don't care. It's Stony Bones who has money. He wouldn't have enough. It would not make sense for any one of us to bear the millions and millions of dollars of legal costs to sue the system or sue whomever for an unknowable result. If the full allocation of roughly 165 million shares of Nextbridge Holdings is finalized, MMTLPs doesn't have anything except a as a as a uh, placeholder in a class action suit, essentially. And you know class action suits. You don't get much out of them. Lawyers get it all. Because lawyers are a privileged class. They went to they went to law school. And so they uh, they uh, they um, you know they deserve the billions and dollars, and you get very little. So anyway, I I would really move. I would really move it. All right, so let's look at this one that Stony Bone says, costs. I'll write it down, costs. Don't be SAC, because SAC spelled backwards is costs, and costs ain't good. Costs, all right, I wrote it down. I There's another one I like. I think it's called Luna. I don't know that there's a lot of people at NASDAQ. Everything's everything's computers, which is why I don't think you need market makers. Market makers are there to steal. And Gary Gensler's there to be a corrupt cop or an incompetent cop so that his bankster friends can steal. Tony, it's going to remain a QCIP number in your account. I own, you know, I don't have the money you have, apparently. But I own uh, MMTLP. I've been in it with you. I've been in it with you. I lost money investing in Torchlight way back when. So I have skinned knees and bruised elbows and a bumped head, and I I have my bruises, but uh, that's all you're going to get. If you don't move your shares to Nextbridge Holding, all you're going to have is a number in your account. And and if it, in my opinion, if it has to go the legal route, it could be a decade. If if you're waiting on Congress. I don't think it'll ever happen. <clears throat> if the stock price goes up and the financial side starts to worry they're going to lose a lot, then you might get a, a, a movement on that settlement path. But realistically, I think that's two years away. I don't think it's happening this year. I don't see any indication that anything's happening this year. So, 
you could, I mean, I said this to one guy yesterday, and I, it, it's, it's really directed at everybody. If you leave your shares of MMTLP with your broker, once NextBridge is fully allocated, all you have is nothing. You have nothing. And you're just leaving your fate at the hands of some attorneys, some congresswomen, and maybe somebody in the back office somewhere. Journalism, there isn't any journalism that's going to help. Nothing. So, move your shares. Move your shares. Well, I think the TA Chartists, um, you, it could be that they're working with the criminals, but it also could just be that they see the same. To me, it's all simplistic. They can get complicated. But once they know the rules, I don't. They do. It's probably pretty easy for them to see patterns. Well, they're human beings. What if you put those same patterns into a computer, into an algorithm? Well, the computers trade on those same patterns. And... I mean, there is a theory that if you can get a stock stocks up, that the computers all become buyers. I don't know. I'm I'm not as um, certain about that, but there's no question from my experience that if if I have a client who is actively trading, trying to make money every month. She would rather buy ZJYL looking at this chart. And of course, this is the one I drew, so it might be useless. But looking at this chart, there's no question in my mind that she would rather buy the stock at $14 or $15 and maybe as high as... as uh, I can't really read that. You know, eighteen or nineteen dollars, when she knows that it's breaking out and it's going to go to the moon right away, rather than buying it down here where we buy it, three dollars, uh, four dollars. You know, because they, the va the time value of their money is so massive that the opportunity cost of buying a stock here and waiting is high because they have trades every day where they can make money on a big, big scale. So they would rather pay two or three times the stock price after it's already in motion. Now they run the risk. They won't have a big position. That's all right. They'll make a trade on some part of it. What you and I have, our arbit arbitrage in life, it's what we're left with is time. We, If we learn a story, we, we believe a stock is underpriced, what we're able to experience is waiting, time. But these big funds, these big wealthy players, some of them anyway, some of them, not Warren Buffett, but some of them. Uh, they don't want they don't want to uh, have that opportunity cost. They want to use their money constant constantly uh, trading for what's now. These big funds can get in an IPO that Morgan Stanley gives them. They can put 10 million in a, a secondary even, and it could be up five points. And they take no risk. Why would they tie their money up in something like this if they can just get a free good from their broker at Morgan or Goldman? That's why they wait till it's moving. And right now, that this stock isn't moving. This stock isn't moving. None of them are. That's why when, when last year, when I saw Finger for several months, 
the market was telling you something was happening, and it did. It just didn't follow through uh, very high at all. I think it went to seven or eight. I can't remember. Nothing is forcing a damn thing. Uh, yeah, the the warrant as a special dividend uh, for GTII. I think it worked. But for some reason, the CEO of COSM convinced uh, Frank Benedetto and uh, uh, Lou Bravo that the best thing since sliced bread was COSM. And they went on a campaign to tell everybody, get the hell out of GTII, give the shorts, give the trap shorts a break. They got families too. Let them off the hook and come over and help this Greek CEO. I forget his name because he's a good guy. That's what happened. Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, I, maybe he feels that way about every stock. Maybe every stock I talk about is a piece of shit. I don't know. Um, uh, I think Avid reads what the chart says and is not afraid to say what he thinks the chart says. And that's good enough with me. It's good enough with me. And if it, if it means every stock idea I have is wrong, well, it could be true. Maybe every idea I have is wrong. I'm more of a fundamental person. I believe that if you know the story, you acquire stock while no one wants it. And eventually, the market will want it. The hard part is, and this has been my failing, is that you want two things. And it, and they're, they're, they're at opposite ends of uh, your intellect. Two things. When it starts to move, you don't want to sell too soon. Because when it starts to move, it could really do what you thought it did. On the other hand, when it starts to move, sell. And i that's the hardest thing to do. Selling is the hardest thing to do. I think the dividend in GTII right now is proving something is up, Lee, because they're giving me the runaround. I'm sure they're giving each of you the runaround. And there's only one reason, to buy time, because they don't have the shares. Oh, April 29th makes one year. I see it's the different dividend. Yeah, um, I don't think there's anything significant about the year, but I think they're trying to stagger requests. So they have, look, they may have a workaround. As far as I know, based on what information I'm giving, they have to get real shares to deliver to the transfer agent. So they, they're in a scramble. Now, once they give them there, maybe you sell or maybe once it's in your brokerage firm in street name, they rehypothecate it. They just mimeograph it a few times and they get it out there so that the, it can be sold down again. It's all, it's all annoying. How does that guy prove out there cannot be a shortened finger in G? Exactly. He can't, Scott. Um, that's my, and it's not, to be fair to him, um, we shouldn't have to have the debate. I believe that FINRA and the SEC could give us, this is my view. The reason FINRA prints the, the short positions is because that's data they feel like we should see. They don't come in and, and uh, 
uh, show deliveries or whatever. Well, I think it's because there aren't any deliveries against those positions. It should show up in later days. There should be a day when there's zero shorted. There should be a month when day after day after day, the net short in the stock is zero. But that never shows up in any of these stocks. So I think the real issue is some guys worked their entire career at the Amex. And before they kick off this mortal coil, they want to believe they had a career that meant something. Me, I, I'm completely aware of my failings of my whole life that when I go meet whomever and they're going to say, that's what you did with your life? That's it? It's not going to be comfortable because what I was taught and, and the experience I have no longer applies anymore. Wall Street now is about gathering assets and then expanding those assets in fraudulent ways or at a minimum without full disclosure. And they have... They have all of the battalions of fudsters and faux journalists protecting them. So, um, but you're right. It, it, his theory makes sense based on what he experienced for 45 years. Now, I can say that Ham... His trading experience is based on what he knew over the last 40 some years. And maybe it's different. I am willing to tell you that when I look at a chart or when I see volume or the other day, Thursday, when this stock traded up, I said, wow, that looks great. But then it doesn't mean anything. Why? Because there's no enforcement of delivery. There's no enforcement of the locate rules. There's no enforcement of whether market makers are bona fide or not. There's no enforcement of know your customer rules. There's no enforcement of who owns 4.9% of a stock after one of these crap deals. There's no enforcement of anything. Because Gary Gensler is there to protect the stock loan department of Goldman Sachs Prime Brokerage. Either that or it's a complete effing moron. And if you watch him in operation, glad-handing and, and schmoozing, he's not a moron. So he's complicit. Because the, what they want you to do, Scott, put your money with an asset manager. She'll take 3% of your money because she's working so hard. A point will go to the house. A point will go to the fund. And a point will go to her. Put a million dollars with her. She's making 30 grand a year off of your account because she's such a good manager. Well, she listens to the research. She gets the marketing materials. Let's go with the Tiger funds, although I guess they went out of business. Let's go with the SAC fund. Let's go with the Ken Griffin fund. Let's go with the S&P 6. Oil and gas sucks. Gold sucks, silver sucks, everything sucks except six companies, seven companies. Well, and then it becomes self-fulfilling. And then put them in this ETF. And then the ETF lends out money through the stock loan department. The mutual funds, we're going to hold this, Mr. and Mr. Yamatama Kwaki. We're going to hold this for 30 years. Oh, great. I don't have to do anything. I'm in your, I leave it in your hands. Well, then 
the back office can start lending out that stock. They they put the mimeograph machine, shudung, 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 and they turn your account into 10 or 15 or 20 times the number of shares out there. They're making stock loan fees. They're making commissions. Other brokers are get to put those shares into their asset base with other clients. And hey, Bob's your uncle. It's the strongest financial markets in the world. Goldman Sachs is the best company. JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley. These are rock solid. But it's all based on fraud. It's all based on the canard that what's in your account is real shares. They are taking the fractional reserve banking model because they're all went to Harvard. They're, they're, they're bloody geniuses. Privileged. They're taking that banking model and they're applying it to securities. Well, the difference is one glaring difference. Securities that aren't money. They're not, it's not fungible. What about voting rights? What about shareholder governance? What about a cap table? What about having to issue a use of proceeds when essentially you're issuing new shares to the market over and over and over again? What about the 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 US securities laws? What about the federal securities laws that you're breaking? None of that matters? No, it doesn't matter because it makes bloody Gary Gensler rich. Do you think that guy could dig a ditch, drive a truck? He's worth $125 million because he can be bought. His integrity can be purchased. Ugh. Gets me so frustrated. Doesn't help, does it, for me to be frustrated. Yeah, it is boring. I agree with that, Rudy. I think the NYSE is responsible. Uh, there's some woman in charge of that. Uh, uh, forget her name. There's a woman in charge of NYSE. She's culpable. The woman in charge of um, NASDAQ is culpable. The man in charge of OTC markets is culpable. The man in charge of FINRA is culpable. The man for sure in charge of SEC is completely culpable. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I forgot to tell him. Um, who said that? Who told Mark ham time? All right, let me see. I forgot about that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. In case he calls in, I'll get this speaker ready. Battery 80%. Um, sorry about that. I forgot to from. warn him. I predicted sub two one finger. Um, good for you, Bader. That's very good prediction. I, I thank you, RW, for doing that for yourself, but also letting me know. I'm trying to do it too. What I got today, RW, I was told that my shares would be received by me this week. I don't have them. So I called in. You know, I was told today I had to be on hold for 20 minutes. I've sent an email to our asset something or other team. I said, oh, well, can I call you back this afternoon for the answer? Oh, no, no, no. It's going to take two day, two business days to get an answer from them. I said, wait a minute. I just was on hold. 
And we're in a world, you have the notes on my file from what everyone else said. Why do you have to send an email? Why do we have to wait two business days? That's where I am, though, on whether or not I'm going to receive my shares is waiting another two business days as they send an email to their asset something or other team. Could be a pipe dream. Could be a pipe dream. I, I I'm not. I, you know, I'm I'm start. I'm very much of the opinion that it's time to just get on with our investing lives and our other things we're doing. I'm not ready to give up on the squeezes because if, for example, if ZJYL were to move, if I feel like there'll be another stock behind it and another stock behind that one. But you're right, Mark. It might not only might none of these squeeze, there might never be a squeeze again. It's possible. But the markets, markets have a funny way of catching people out eventually. And, uh, um all right, I think I'm going back where I already started. She's wonderful. Kate Middleton is wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. No, I don't normally have a cough like that. <laughs> I don't know what's going wrong with me. I don't know what's going wrong. I don't know if it's because I'm I, I get upset all the time, or uh, I, I really don't know. I'm I'm a little worried about it, frankly. I've always been blessed with being healthy, except for gout and my mental illness. I've been I've been healthy all my life. I can, I can. He hasn't. He hasn't. Uh, been able to come on because there's um, a quiet period of, in all of this. Um, and I also think that he's been fighting for you, for himself. And he's had to uh, absorb a lot of the blows that somebody did as it relates to CAUD and logic. But I think there'll be news come. There already has been news put out by, uh, regarding Go Logic, but he hasn't been able to talk about that. But he, I can get him on. And Logic, my feeling on Logic is the reverse merger candidate was selected and it was meant to be announced and taken care of when the D SPAC occurred. But somebody on that D, D SPAC team left both Logic and CAUD with no money and with fires to put out. Now, you can argue these are the greatest guys. They know what they're doing, all that. That might be true. But somebody let the shoe drop or the ball fall or the tree collapse or whatever you want to say. So anyway, that that meant time went by. Having said that, the same March idea I gave you for finger, I think applies to logic. Very logical time frame to get a deal done is by the end of the first quarter. Now, will it be the by the end of next week? Maybe not. Maybe it's the following month, but I think we're getting really close to hearing about that reverse merger. And, you know, we'll know more about it then. <clears throat> yeah, I'm trying, David, I put an order in today um, and they told me I had to wait for some sort of day trading pattern or something. I said, I'm not a day trader. I'm not. But uh, I have to wait till Monday. But I'm going to try to buy a little bit more. Not a lot. 
but I'm going to buy a little more. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to get Hammerino on. I texted him. It's my fault. I I blabbed instead of letting him know sooner. I didn't see the trailer. I didn't see it. Um, somebody said me last night that it was good. I know I'm no Sinatra. Lou. <laughs> I know I'm no Sinatra. All right, no trust, no believe. I call Fidelity and they don't want to transfer my shares. I don't understand. Is that what they're telling you? They do, they will not transfer, then it's too late. Um, you could move your account to another brokerage firm, but I I doubt that'll change anything. If they're telling you it says they don't want to or they can't, press them, press them, write them a letter, copy your congressman and your senator and, and copy Goober. But it might be too late. At some point, it's going to be too late. Then our only chance then, and it may happen to me, that our only chance then is to wait for the settlement. And there's three pressure points. Legal system, government journalism, public advocacy, and financial systems own pressures because once Greg McCabe is able to talk to the other attorneys on the opposite side of the table and say, guys and girls, here is a chock full order book, so to speak. Everything is full. Everything that's in your accounts is your responsibility. And guess what? We have an engineering report here. We have cash here. And we have a CapEx budget. Right now, our shares are worth $650. And in 18 months, we expect them to be worth $1,200 a share at a $60 oil price. What are you going to do about it? It's on your table. We're going to go public as soon as we feel comfortable that we've locked up the acreage we want and we've raised the money what we want, we're going to make this public. And your firms that you represent have hundreds of millions of shares naked. And it's on you all. Settle now or settle in 18 months. Do what you want to do. Our hands are clean. We've taken care of what we are supposed to. Good luck. That's what's coming. And uh, and that's not that's not nothing, by the way. And that's probably where I'm going to be. Uh, it's a it could be a big payout. But I, uh, all right, Red Pepper, that's great. <coughs> God. <coughs> Yes, Sam. My name is Ann Elk. Yes, Sam. That's A-N-N-E Elk, not A-N-N Elk. Yes, Sam. Um, nothing special with cost. I don't know. I don't know how to look it up. I wrote it down. Oh, I... I have to think of where can I find that. I have three letters, and I have to figure out how I can research those three letters. I don't know how to do it. I certainly don't know how to do it quickly. But I, I would trust Stony Bones. Oh, he says, don't touch Luna. Anna Luna, Anna Paulina Luna. So Luna's not good? Yeah. All right. 
All right. So I have to look into Cos versus Luna. That's one way I could research it. I could say Luna versus Cos. I could do that. Yeah, I think Ham will come on. There's Skinny Whale. Yay. Hey, Skinny Whale. Oh, Skinny Whale. <laughs> they can buy their homes outright. That's what I hope they do, Skinny. I hope they buy their homes outright. I have a fear that they might be the last um, in the pool before before the because who's going to buy afterward? You know they're they're extending mortgages to forty years and in some cases longer. They're making it a one percent down payment. Interest rates seem high, but they're pretty low. Uh, I don't see them staying this low uh, if the bond market rolls over. And these people here, around here, it's mostly women. I, I think that's who I see. It's anecdotal. I haven't seen data. But they're in the prime earning period of their lives, you know? And they have good salaries. I'm not saying they can't afford it. But who's going to buy it from them? That's just what I wonder. I guess you don't need to know because they'll be in the houses for 20 years, 30 years. Um, and maybe it'll take care of itself. I don't know. Well, I think I think BlackRock is by the buyer, all these big funds. Why? Because they're not any smarter than you are. They have to cheat to make their money. And in this case, it's not cheating. What it is, though, is they know that human beings need a place to live. So if they can buy all these places, build all these places, be the landlord on all of these places, they have income every year and they they charge 2%, 20% usually. And they live a nice life because they're special. They're special people. I don't know that it's going to collapse. I don't, it, real estate doesn't feel like it's going to collapse anytime soon. It's weird. There's a terror attack in Moscow. That's not great. How can there be a squeeze if the other side can sell forever? Well, yeah, that's right. I think the the ways to stop the squeeze are massive changes in the value of the company overnight. It's hard to get there without the the criminals convincing the CEO to sell more stock down at a low price. Look what happened with HNRA. Although <clears throat> I think at these prices, you can still triple your money or more or better. But that was worth $58 a share before he agreed to issue stock down at, at uh, $2 because that's what the smiling faces told him to do. They drive it down. Our, our markets are, are completely corrupted, um, but they can't sell forever. They don't do it for free, um, uh, but artificial in some stocks, just look at them. They look at DBMM. They're fighting, they're fighting, they're fighting, they're fighting. But the shorts could sell forever. Look at NWBO. The shorts could sell forever. Look at Finger. A great, great story. But Jeff Easton destroyed that stock. Oh, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. Well, it's Jeff Easton once removed. And he has clever lawyers that saying, you know what the definition of me is? If NextBridge offers 500 million shares, that's an interesting. That's an interesting question. 
if they created a Series B stock that couldn't vote and couldn't get a dividend, the only thing Davilio, Davi, Daviolio is the only thing there would there would have to they'd have to get some sort of special rule that allows the series B to cover a series A short position i think that's workable though i think it could be built into the agreement to allow that to happen because it's all fiction anyway so you it's it's not a bad idea so you could have the Xbridge issue 500 million shares of Series B to cover the short in 500 million of counterfeit of 500 million shares of common, call it Series A. But you'd have to in the documents or in the agreements that everybody signs off on, and it'll be a lot of signatures, a lot of lawyers. You'd have to agree that that closes out that position. But I like that because then, because you bring up a good point. Uh, I'm, I'm more worried about control than the dividend. Um, and I just presumed that, I don't know the structure of uh, Nextbridge, but I just presume, assumed, which is always a mistake, that they would set up the voting to, to maintain control. But that, it's a really good point. You do not want the criminals having half of the outs or more than half of the outstanding shares so they could vote and and then help them their friends do another destructive. So I love your idea as it relates to voting. Uh, in terms of the dividend, yeah, 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 yeah. You could do that. I like it. I think it's a brilliant idea. Davio, Daviolio. That's perfect. Add while it's down. Add while everyone's saying it's terrible. It's no, it looks terrible. It might be, but. If you're in it, you might as well add to it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's what I think, Galadon. I don't own Northwest Bio, but if one of these stocks did move, I'd buy a little bit of it. I think. The selling, the reason to own Northwest Bio, all the fundamental stuff you're talking about, but it's that one of these pharma, the big pharma will come and buy them. Now, ideally, and you, who knows, big pharma could be working with a, a, a Goldman Sachs banker or a, a SAC a brainiac. You know, and maybe they want to get Northwest Bio bankrupt and then they just get the technology out of bankruptcy. But I, I don't think, uh, I don't know a lot about how big pharma thinks. I do know in the mining space, the oil and gas space, that the big companies, they don't mind overpaying once a project is proven and is working. They don't mind overpaying. They'd rather own the asset than go through some confusing bankruptcy situation, which becomes unpredictable. Yeah, Trump got money from uh, uh, his social media. If he can't sell for six months, maybe the criminals can short it down. I agree with that. But but if you buy NWBO, I really don't 
I think you have to make a decision. I'm not trading it. Or maybe you can. I, I'm, but at the your core position, maybe you trade on the on the edge of your position. But your core position, I'm getting in it, and I'm just waiting for a buyout. Because that's what will happen with Northwest Bio. A big company is going to buy them out. And if you're lucky, two companies want to buy. There's a bidding war. But I think it gets bought out. I don't know. Pick a number. 80 bucks. Um, and and one day it'll be 45 cents. The next day it'll be $80. And the charts won't tell you when. Wolf had good news. <laughs> Fundamentals versus the efforts. Yeah. Look, they already have such a huge short position that adding to it, and my opinion, I can't prove this, the the documents that Yorkville issues or Lynn Partners, that convertible note, that toxic note. Shady attorneys give it to the prime brokers to cover their ass. When the settlement comes, those attorneys don't go update those files. Nobody thinks to call the prime broker and say, hey, you know, everything that's sold naked now has no protection because they're all in on it. They're all in on it. <clears throat> Wow. Wow, Galadon. All right. Check out Cuss. All right. I'll uh, I'll look. I, I believe your opinion. Good. You got yours out of Schwab. That's great. All right. I said hi to Jennifer before. Let's go down to the bottom. Doesn't look like he's going to call in. Maybe he's Maybe he's mad at me. <laughs> Just kidding. He called me at one o'clock and I didn't answer him. I know why, because I, I had to go to the post office. All right, ZJYL is 1313. Um, uh, Nothing's up. Nothing is up. Let me see which one could be up. Let's look at HNRA. Maybe that one's up. No, nothing's up. I don't see a single stock up. So let's not go over them. It's depressing. Oh, all right. So I, okay, I'm at the bottom. My understanding is NWBO is anticipating approval. Well, that would be huge, wouldn't it? That would be huge. Now, I I think if it's just approval by itself, the stock will run up, then the shorts <coughs> will drive it down. <coughs> If there's institutional buying, but no institutional buys, institution buys a 40 cent stock. If they do a reverse split, the shorts will destroy it. The key is that once approval comes, that somebody can plug into their computers. Well, this will be revenue of 60 million a year for the next 30 years. And they give it a present value, and and it jumps out at their page, and an, an overpaid investment wanker goes, "Wow!" Calls up the CEO at Pfizer or at uh, Gilead and says, "You got to buy this," and we think you should pay, I don't know, fifty billion for it, and. Pay us a big 
chunk. Lion nailed the 170 on what? On what? Okay, Northwest Bio submitted it in December, 150 days, May and November. That's see, that's a stock to add. That's a stock to slowly or quickly build a position in, I think. I don't think it's a stock to trade, though, which is funny. I mean, I would just be in it, set it and forget it, add to it. Maybe on the margin, if it went to a buck, you sell some, buy it back at 80 cents or something. But I would just set it aside and wait for one or two of the big pharmaceutical companies to buy it. Oh, OCGN. So Kit Kitteridge says GME is going to be up. And <clears throat> he's one of the guys that you should probably listen to instead of me. And all those technicians that you bring up, I think, um, you, God, it can't catch up. CGC, if Northwest Bile goes from 45 to 80, <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> You don't have to fly me first class. Um, I'm actually considering moving to Vegas. I don't know if I will, but I'm considering it. I have a friend out there and uh, uh, a couple of projects, too, that I would like to get more involved with. Country Pride, fill out a form. They can't DRS and, yeah, don't ask them to DRS it because it's a private company. Um, there's no form. In my case, there was no form to fill out. I did have to agree to something they read to me over the phone. But there was no form to fill out. But no, just ask them, Country Pride, ask them to deliver the shares to you. Send you your physical shares at home. Then automatically they will set up an account for you at the transfer agent. So one concern people have is that if I do that, they my shares could be lost in the mail, or if you know I pick it up at my PO box on the way home, my mailbox could be my glove compartment could burst into flames, and I could lose my certificate. But when they send it out in your name, they have to notify. I think they have to. They do do it, but I think it's mandatory that they do it. They set up an account at the transfer agent in your name because they are moving their certificates from street name, in your case, Fidelity. So at the transfer agent right now, it shows Fidelity owns 50 million shares of, MA, of NextBridge. As they send to you 10,000 shares, they have to take the 10,000 out of the 50 million certificate, if it is. They take that off. They remove fidelity from 50 million down to 49,990,000 shares. And they put 10,000 shares in the name of Country Pride. Now it's being sent to you at home, but it's in to use brokerage terms that used to apply. It's in type one instead of type two. It's in safekeeping instead of in street name. It's in your name. <laughs> so it's at the transfer agent in your name. 
And if those certificates get lost, <coughs> the record is at the transfer agent. I believe for as long as this issue is outstanding, there's going to be a great deal of cooperation with the transfer agent and NextBridge and keeping costs low regarding security replacement if you had to do it. <clears throat> ah, sorry. I, I, does Series B make sense? Well, um, yeah, it'd have to be thought about from all angles. I mean, it, it, to me, you, it, it would be a two step process. The criminals would have to buy let's say, Series A stock from the company. But in the document, once they paid for it, the Securities A stock would go to cover the short position. So you have net zero. Um, the, the brokerage firms, you, you all, but you, you got, you and me, because it looks like I'm not getting my shares. So it's, it's not so much that it goes to the criminals. Let me just talk about my shares. Let's call it 1,400 shares. I, I don't know. It's something like that. I'm waiting for 1,400 shares to be delivered to me in addition to what I already have. So the 1,400, if Nextbridge were to issue 1,400 shares to the criminals at... $1,200, the criminals would be paying that, but the shares would be delivered to whatever prime broker had the open position so they could deliver it to cover <coughs> at E-Trade. So then I own those shares, not the criminals. So I think that would be how you do it. Um, and I think whatever standard governance is in the agreements already that that Greg McCabe and his friends are going to keep control of Nextbridge. <laughs> God, driving me crazy. Oh, Ethereum. I like what I've heard is Ethereum is great. All right, I'll look I'll look up KAS. Uh um I think uh, I think logic might be under a little bit of pressure right now, obviously. But I think within See, I don't know. I think they have to do their year-end finances. That's what I think. They have to, logic, in order to be reverse mergered, uh, has to be a clean shell, and it has to be current in all of its filings. So now that we're into March, I think that puts an extra year if they had done it in november um i'm not sure they would have had to have annual numbers for 2023 but i think they need the annual uh, uh filing with the sec to be current so my question is then 
how long does that take? I would say it. the rule of thumb I would use is 15 days after. No, no, no. I would say it could be a month. It could be it could be as much as six weeks, a month and a half after the close of the first quarter <clears throat> to get all that all of those documents filed. So I'd I'd say anywhere between two weeks or three weeks and six weeks from now, seven weeks from now, we should be all finished with logic. And I think it'll it'll be a reverse merger that we've that has been described to us. Um, if they've had to issue more shares to pay for things, which is possible because because the um, I actually heard it the other way. They were going to reduce the number of shares. So I don't know. But let's just say they've had to issue more shares. You know, maybe the the number is not 40 to 60 cents, but it's 20 to 40 cents value of, of the reverse merger. That's still massively higher from these levels. So anyway, but I think we have to wait. Uh, um I'm trying to add it up to you know you know maybe mid april at the latest but maybe by mid Mar by mid sorry this is march april mid may by the latest but i think more likely by mid mid april we'll know and so it might not be much longer at all uh and i would expect that the value of the deal will be somewhere between 20 and 40 cents a share conservatively. So um, what is that? That's within three weeks or within seven weeks from now, something in that range. And, but if you're, if you're interested in something about it, I can talk with you. I can't do it over the airwaves. Just email me. Uh, I'm going to go in this weekend to FedEx and pull it all down at farandbalanced. At, you know, this farandbalanced at gmail. Farandbalanced at gmail. Email email me, but I'll remember your name. Um, okay, so I that that sounds interesting. Oh, there's two Lunas. It's not a race. I'd, I'm very interested in crypto, very interested in it. I just don't have any money in it. I also think uh, uh, Bitcoin, the wrong time to be buying Bitcoin was when everyone's talking about it and it's running. The time to buy it is when nobody wants it. But I don't know. Hey, Raymundo. Oh, gosh. All crypto. Crypto night. It's all crypto night. It's a little bit funny, this feeling inside. I'm not one of those who can easily hide. Oh, there. <laughs> JP Morgan transferred when I, that, I like that. 
Raising fiduciary duty. Auto mags. That's a good one. What what is this stupid e day trader label? I couldn't do it. I, I put in, I couldn't. I called in and they said, um, uh a couple i forgot a couple of things but they said we can find we can do a one time exemption like i'm not a day trader well you've traded four times in 5 days so what that's not day trading yeah i think i could ask mark to come on as a guest but he's really busy. He is really busy. Maybe I could go on a guest on one of his, uh, one of his uh, uh, conferences. I've been working on my GTII dividend, and. Um, you go to this custom, you go to documents, you print out the, I forget, what, rule 144 packet, sign everything. I was told when I called in over a week ago, just upload it. It's very easy. Take a picture, upload it. That's what I did. So I called in today to follow up. And they said, the guy said, put me on hold. But then he came back and said, sir, you've got to mail those documents to us. So he saw that I had uploaded them. He said, you got to mail. I said, well, the last guy didn't tell me that. Well, in fairness to him, on the cover of the document, it said to mail them in. So <laughs> I probably just should have read the document instead of listening to the other person. But I mailed it. That's why I was um away from my phone when am called uh good i just got off the phone with schwab they said i could sell my restricted shares and they would give me the dollar amount at this time Well, you can't sell your restricted shares if if they still have a um, legend on it. You can't sell it in the open market. But as a gray market purchase, they can do what they want. They could they could offer you a discount to the share price. They could offer you a premium. It's up to them. So. If they were to buy your shares right now, they would have you sign a stock power, I'm I'm certain. And and they would give you that price. And so you would have cash in your account. Then they could close out your position. Yes, I think, Michael, what it means is they're take they're buying your shares in in the error account i think they're taking an error and because it's 30 cents or whatever it is um they're just going ahead and doing it so yeah they can do that um would i do it um Yeah, it might make it might be the easiest thing to do for you. Try to get them to pay you the ask, or you know, a little bit higher. And when you get your money, um, you could buy GTII or transfer it. You know, the problem is if you buy GTII. I think you would have an argument to be made with the IRS that you're buying a different security, but I'm not a lawyer. B 
because you sold your shares in the gray market, the restricted shares. But you won't be selling them at a loss anyway, will you? You'd be selling them at a gain. So, yeah, sell them. Try to get them to give you the ask. And when you get the cash, buy your position back. Uh, Michael, what I think it shows is that Schwab is having a hard time honoring this dividend. This dividend, this restricted dividend that has some language that it has to go through the transfer agent is cost, causing difficulty. I, it confirms what I believe is happening to me at Morgan Stanley, which is they're they're just slow walking it because they're trying to stagger <coughs> they have to go out and buy shares yeah it makes sense it makes sense but they're just doing it, it you know it's a gray market trade they're doing it off the exchange they're buying it from you they're making a deal with you and uh if if they give you the cash right away, then you can ask them, when do I get my cash? Is, is it free to trade? As soon as you get your cash, you could buy back in to GTII if you want to. Um, and it doesn't cost you very much. But obviously, that's the risk, is if they give you 30 cents and you have to buy back in at 32 cents. That's not fun, but at least you'll then have stock that you can trade if it runs. <coughs> yeah, I think that's the solution they have. They can't, they'd rather buy it from you than go out in the public market and buy shares because they might drive the stock price up. That's how I read what you're saying. Yeah, Ham hasn't called in. So I I guess I'm sorry. Uh, I should have called him sooner. Um, uh, and, you know, we'll, we'll do something. He's probably with his kid. Yes, exactly, Mark. Um, all right, let's see what this is. Stony, yeah. I bet and the funny thing is with with all those um in a squeeze, my numbers were very high. I still think it that could happen. I just don't feel it right now. That's all. <coughs> Chill, Will. <laughs> I don't even remember what I was saying, but I probably deserved that. Uh, I did contact him. He just didn't get back to me. All right, let's go to the bottom. Maybe we'll just see what. That's pretty cool. Have he? Um, I'm, I got to look, look, look into it. Um, I, I'm not against a new idea. 80 smackaroos is fine. Just get it done. That's my opinion. Just get it done. Um, just get it done. Um I'm I'm not positive I'm getting mine, and I'm going to be disappointed if I don't, because having the shares at Nextbridge, uh, let's say I got hit by a bus, which one of my friends at what's now Morgan Stanley would laugh at. That that bus has your name on it. Oh. That was swell. Um, that was a long time ago. He's a great guy. Um, but anyway, 
I'd pay the 80. I paid 60. So I uh, know you're saying, why should you pay 80 when I paid 60? But <laughs> you won't remember. If I'm right, which I think I am, the first dividend that they pay out will more than cover that $80, and you'll be glad you have it. TD Ameritrade, they could help me sell my GTII shares if I wanted. Well, so Steve, you got to decide for yourself. Do you want to just say no, um, go out and buy them? You're not going to be able to make them do that. Uh, I want to be in the fight. I'm going to knock over that windmill. Or do you just want to resolve the problem? I guess the only other thing you would want to think about is long-term capital gains. But does 24% versus 44% make that much of a difference? I don't know. I Maybe if you just want out completely, you just want out completely, maybe you say, look, I'll enter into a contract right now with you. You can pay me whatever. I don't know where it's trading. 30 cents. But I want it settle. I want it to settle one year and one day from uh, the original record date, so that my gain is long term. You you might be able to negotiate that. Um, but then, if the stock runs, you're going to be out. That's that'll frustrate you. Um, if the stock goes down, you you got to, whatever document you sign, hopefully it's strong enough that they pay you the higher price. Um, I, I think if this is the only solution you can get, Uh, let me put it this way, Steve. What if GTI next month goes to $50, uh, $25 a share in a, some sort of spike? And you can't sell because you, you haven't done anything. If, on the other hand, you they help you sell it now and you take the cash and maybe put it all back into GTII, or put half whatever number you want. Um, at least then you could sell, you could take advantage of that run up. In other words, if you if you do nothing, your your trade your shares you can't trade in case the stock goes up. So it's an in it's an inelegant solution, and it's clear. They're basically admitting they don't want to go out in the open market and cause the stock to go up by buying everybody in. It's a gray market offer. I think I'd ask for the ask price or even higher than the ask price and see if you could get it done. I don't know. It's weird that you're the second person that's pointed out uh, this kind of offer. I didn't even know they were making that. What would I do? I would probably accept, I would probably try to get a higher price and I would probably accept it if they they gave the cash immediately and I could then take the money to buy back my GTII shares in the open market. I think that's what I would do. I'll ask Cam if if he uh, calls me. I'll ask him and I'll tell you what he thinks.
Wow. So you got your NBH certs in about three weeks. So let me ask you that, Steve. I've been trying to get mine for, uh, I think, since the end of January. But the guy I talked to, I don't know, 10 days ago, told me that on their records, they their initiation point was March 1. March 1. So based on that, if I add three weeks to it, that's today. But you say about three weeks. So maybe it'll come next week. Maybe it'll come next week. That'd be good. Man, yeah, that'd be good. I would I would feel good to get my certificate. <laughs> I'll bet you're a real blast at parties. <laughs> oh. Are parties fun without alcohol? That's a nice trade. It's a nice trade. Shouldn't it be any day now that Fingers releases something? I think so. I expect something to come out next week. I think there's three or four things pending based on the interview. And if you include earnings, maybe it's five things. Um, and I think you might hear about one or two next week. That's what I think. That's great. I'm really glad you initiated the transfer. Um, I'm not going to say your first part of your name, but those are nice knockers. I left Vegas after 18 years. Oh, I'm sorry. It, is it because you were Asian that they... They, oh, that's terrible. And it's violent? Mm. I don't want to do that. Thank you, Scott. <coughs> You're probably already gone, but thank you, Scott. Um, Ah, so E-Trade is saying that you have to set up the account. Well, let me think about that. When I did it last year, they set up the account, but now it's Morgan Stanley. So maybe, maybe that's right. It's not hard to set up the account. Uh In, in other stock positions, it would be difficult. But in this case, I think uh, AS, Equinity is working closely with NextBridge. Um, but I'm skeptical, Stan. I, I really think that the account is automatically set up as soon as they issue the shares in your name. But I could be wrong. So why don't we leave that as an open uh, issue? I'll find out because I'm going through it myself. Well, they could go into NWBO, but I don't think Cam trusts the um, billion two shares outstanding, but it's not a bad idea. What I'm hoping, Scott, you're already gone, I know. What I'm hoping is there will be one, two, three deals in a row. 
<laughs> That'd be fun, skinny whale. Uh, I heard Florida's expensive, though. I guess it depends on where in Florida. You know me, I like to live in the expensive neighborhoods. Um, um, I haven't seen it. Somebody sent it to me, but I didn't watch it. Um, I'm sure it's good. That's a good team. They work. They work hard, and uh, they're all talented. The whole crew of them. I, I really liked them when I met them. Good for you. You have, well, you're not on anymore. I hope the wealth trans transfers. Yeah, that's what I agree with you, Galadin. Don't trade it. Just build your position. I don't own any, but it's one of the ones that I'd like to buy. But, of course, nothing, literally nothing has gone up for two months. God, what? I hate it. Let me see if this will change that. Sorry, I'm coughing and that's it's terrible. All right, let's see what's at the bottom. All right, I'm not going to talk about costs because I don't know nothing about it. But I think Stony Bones knows what he's talking about. Um, yeah, Northern Virginia, Northern Nevada. So in other words, not Las Vegas, go to North. How about Henderson? That's where I was thinking of going, Henderson. But um, there, this this gold project that I'm I have to follow up with on with many of you guys. Um, it's about an hour and a half out. I I would bring my radio radioactive detector because I isn't that where they did the bombs? But if that became a project that I did more with. Maybe I'd go live out there as long as the sand isn't radioactive. I don't know any of this stuff. Arkansas. Yeah, I've heard Johnny V. I've heard Arkansas is a nice place. I've never even been there other than an airport. I've never been there that I know of. Um, we might have driven through it. I, Tom, I my shares last year were mailed to me. The account was opened automatically at AST. I'm a little... Was it Fred? I can't remember. Or Stan? Um, I'm a little concerned now that I just read the one posting that maybe this second round, I'm concerned if I get them at all. But if I get them, I might have, well, I already have an account. That's true. I already have an account. I would just have to add to it. I don't know. My opinion is that they automatically set up an account for you. You know what? I think it's on the fact sheet that um, Greg McKay put out. So let me just read it if I can find it. By the way, I'm in last place in my NCAA uh, doohickey. How's that? I'm that bad. I'm that bad. All right, let me see. Uh, 
What am I looking up? Um, ah, next bridge. Hydrocarbons, back sheet. Frequently asked questions. AST will register and record your ownership of shares in book entry form. Book entry means AST maintains your shares on your behalf without the need for physical certificates. I'm not sure we I'm not sure we're at that point with our brokerage firms. What is the process to transfer my shares of Nextbridge directly to a new AST account in book entry form? If you hold your shares in street name, your shares may be issued in book entry form in an account in the name of your broker, bank, or nominee. If so, you know, that's street name. In order to directly register such shares and transfer the shares electronically from your broker's account to a new AST account in your name, please instruct your broker to submit a letter of instruction to AST indicating the number of shares to be transferred along with a stock power containing a medallion signature guarantee. That I hope they don't make you do. That is probably why they mail the certificates to us. That's a pain in the ass to get a medallion signature. It used to be easy. You could just go into your brokerage firm. But now your brokerage office could be thousands of miles from where you live. Okay. If you hold your shares in street name, your shares may be represented by a physical stock certificate. If so, in order to directly register such shares in your name, your broker will need to mail to AST the original stock certificate and a stock power. Con oh, God, that same medallion crap. Can I get a physical stock certificate? We recommend that you maintain your shares in book entry form to minimize the risk such certificate being lost, stolen, or destroyed. However, you may request a share certificate for all or a portion of your book entry shares at any time. A certificate for your full shares will be mailed to you. Okay, none of the Nextbridge common stock subscription rights or NUCO common will be traded on any securities exchange, nor, none nor, anyway, let's leave that off, nor be eligible for electronic trading through DTC or other clearing. There is no established, that's good. I think that's great. If you have your shares in an IRA, you can possibly get this benefit, but your brokerage firm has to tell AST that your shares qualify. That might be where the problems comes in. Okay, how many shares of Nextbridge common stock are authorized and outstanding? 
NextBridge has 500 million authorized shares of common stock. And as of July 21, 2023, NextBridge had 248,830,516 shares outstanding. I don't think reading that helps, did it? Um, I don't think, uh, Tom, I do not think they can DRS the tr shares because they're it's a privately held company. So I expect to receive the physical shares in my name in my mailbox. Um, I also expect that automatically those certificates will be recorded at the transfer agent but i will call to make sure that is indeed the case in the system wants us to do everything electronically so they can rip us off so in other stock situations i know it can be extremely expensive, unfair, and time-consuming to get physical certificates back into electronic form. But in this case, AST, or whatever it's called, equanimity, um, I'm sure is going to cooperate 100% with NextBridge to make this all easy, inexpensive, and 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 uh, quick. Given that Alpine days are numbered. I don't think, I, yes, I understand the question, but I really don't think another brokerage house would take the liability. Um, now that it's 30 cents, maybe, maybe it's not underwater. I think it is still underwater, but maybe it's not. But I, I just don't see another brokerage house taking it, taking it on. Uh, voluntarily now if 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 the kappa de tuta copies all get together in some smoke-filled room and and say we're going to demand it that somebody takes it over well maybe that'll happen oh my gosh stan see I think they ran out of shares. Oh, Lordy. Lordy, Lordy, Lordy. Lordy, Lordy, Lordy. I think so. All right, let me go to the bottom. Let me go to the bottom. You did get your, that's great. That's, it doesn't have a legend on it. It's free to trade. That's fantastic. Um, I assume you can, <laughs> I assume you can send it in now and they'll make it counterfeit and you can sell it if you want. Or just, or just hang on to it for a while i don't know i think that's great um i i'm not telling you to sell the dividend it's just if your brokerage firm the only solution they offer you is they will help you sell it or they'll give you cash for it. 
the only reason I would think to do it is if you do nothing, at least this is how I read those two situations. If you do nothing, your stock stays uh, restricted. So then if GTII were to run, let's just say it goes to 15, you wouldn't be able to sell it. So the only thing I see is if that's the only solution they offer you, if they give you the cash immediately, the friction that you take the risk on is what does it cost to buy it back? So that's why I was saying, see if you can get them to sell it at the ask or something like that. And uh, when you get the cash, you can buy it back in. Then you can own the stock free to trade. That's all. That's the only reason. I, I'm not saying you should sell the dividend. Yeah, I don't know. I I I go down there to be close to um, Skinny Whale and her her friends and and family. All right, let's see what Steve said. Two to six week. The updates were vague. Well. <laughs> That's what I'm experiencing, vague updates. So maybe it'll show up. That would be great. I'm all confused by. Oh, it says restricted sale. Well, that's not good. Uh, let me think what you can do. I think what you do then, RW, is you call the transfer agent. I forget who it is, Liberty Stock Transfer, and ask them how you can get the legend removed. And my guess is they're going to tell you to send it to Liberty Stock Transfer. They'll get the legend removed. They can make it electronic. And again, I think. Uh, we're in a situation where Liberty Stock Transfer is working very closely with GTII, and I don't think it'll be expensive or time-consuming. So I think any other stock, that would be a bad situation to be in. But I think in this situation, it's good. You'll be fine. Just call the transfer agent, and uh, uh, they could get that they can get that legend removed for you. Probably you have to sign a, uh, you, know, you know, a stock power and uh, maybe it's more involved than that. I would send it in two different envelopes, but uh, yeah, I, I, I think you can get that done uh, with the transfer agent fairly quickly. I think it's Liberty Stock Transfer. I can't remember. Ooh. All right, I'm good. While you guys are talking about crypto night, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to look and see how I'm doing. And the most important thing on my mind, my last place. My last place finish in my NCAA. How can that be that I'm that bad? Yep, yeah, I'm in last place. You know why? I picked Kentucky. That is why. I was wrong on Kentucky. And I was wrong on Texas Tech. So I got two bombs there.
I was wrong on Gonzaga. And I was wrong on Kansas. Yeah. I was wrong on Colorado. It's not very pretty. Do I did he did he? Oh, looks like I'm gonna win on UConn. How's that? That'll make up for it. I'm sure nobody else has UConn to win in this round. Yeah, so I'm in last place. I think Richard Hoffman is going to be really busy when April 29th, when the dividend is supposed to become available. That's interesting. Kentucky, <laughs> it destroyed my bracket. Eh, who would have figured Oakland would win? But apparently somebody came in with three-point shots. That's pretty – I like three-pointers. I think that's great. Hey, John, how are you from Hawaii? I'm Yellows. I'm Yellows. Okay, so it's uh, 4.45. I guess I can try to go 15 more minutes. <clears throat> God, I'm sorry for that. I can't breathe if, unless I do, you know. Can't breathe. All right, so HNRA closed up to, is in the green. ZJYL in the green, two cents. Two smackers. Well, not smackers, two pennies. Um. I've been to Honolulu. Um, I, a friend of mine owned several properties there, and she let me stay in one of them. Well, well with her family. It was nice. It was great. I nearly, uh, I, oof, I was so crazy. We went to the other side of the island, and the waves were great. And I went out, and I body surfed like an idiot. And the undertow was so powerful and the wave was so big. Uh, it was fun for, I don't know, whatever nanosecond time that I was in the wave. And then it just flipped me over and crashed me on the sand so hard. My friends came running to get me to make sure I was okay. It really knocked the wind out of me. And I'm just thankful that it didn't, like, break something. I stopped doing it. I stopped going into the water. It's just I'm not a good enough swimmer. I'm used to the Atlantic waves where they barely, you know, it looked so small compared to Hawaiian waves. But I loved Hawaii. I thought it was great. I can see where you might get a little stir crazy if you're there too long because it's not that big an island. But it, I, I guess they have these flights from island to island that aren't that expensive. I liked Hawaii. <coughs> I, I did. I enjoyed it. Um It was a while ago. Hey, Sky Dog. Yeah, we're trying to keep up the fight. I don't know. The last couple of days, I got more worked up than I should have. But um, that, I mean, that's a familiar refrain by now. Uh, um, in the case of MMTLP, I think I just, 
it just came clear to me yesterday that I should be really emphasizing. I have before, but I have never done it with so much um, so much adamacy as I did yesterday. I, I really think people are crazy not to move their shares to AST. And then I forget what else I might have got worked up over um, the day before. I can't remember. I can't remember. Uh, yeah, I'm always getting worked up. I know. It's. I wish I could be a better person, but I'm just kind of stuck with what I am. I do try, but I mostly fail. Mostly fail. I can't believe I'm doing so badly in the NCAA. One year I was in the lead for a while. I'm glad you moved. I'm glad you moved your shares. <coughs> yeah, we all fall short. I noticed that about all of you. <laughs> Just kidding. My sister always hates that when I say that. Because it is just a joke. I don't have any. <sighs> All right. So we have nine more minutes. How are we going to fill it? Let's see what the news is. Let's see if Kate Middleton is okay. Let's see if um, Marjorie Green has gotten the speaker booted. Uh, see, William discovered Kate had cancer before he went to Gre the King Constantine's memorial service. Of course he did. And they had all these rumors. Oh, what a sweetheart. Megan wishes Kate health and healing. Oh, Megan. She's having uh, chemotherapy. I know I've never had that, but I've had a, a friend that did, and it really is draining, but it's survivable. Massacre in Moscow. Oh, my gosh. At a music concert. 40 dead. Oh, that's terrible. 100 wounded. Oh, that's terrible. They want us to go to war. Michael stores closing. I've never shopped at Michael's in my life. Deadline on student loan forgiveness is six weeks away. Marjorie Taylor Greene launches bid to remove Speaker Mike Johnson from office as she files motion to vacate in fury over forcing vote on massive $1.2 trillion funding bill. I filed the motion to vacate today. It's time for us to go through the process, take our time, with a new Speaker of the House that stands with the Republicans. 
Trump claims he has $500 million in cash. Chelsea Clinton defends Baron Trump. Puerto Rico tells Kamala her long overdue visit is just a political stunt. Republicans now face a House majority of one as GOP Rep Mike Gallagher says he will resign early. God, they just... Trump's $3.5 billion windfall. That's a hell of a windfall. $3.5 billion? That's a nice windfall. Netanyahu says he is going into Rafa with or without American support. Israeli Prime Minister tells Blinken Israel is going to finish Hamas and will do it alone. I'm going to keep my comments to myself. Candace Williams leaves the Daily Wire. Terrifying moment. Huge waves overcome La Paz streets after Bolivia is hit with heavy rains and reservoirs failed. Oh, my gosh. This is terrible. I hope people didn't get killed. Martha Stewart created a chobster. It's stuffing a chicken with a lobster. Martha Stewart. All right, that's enough news, huh? Okay. Schwab wants too much money to move shares, and it's in a retirement account. Well, the aspect that it's in a retirement account makes sense because that's something you have to decide. Um, You can still qualify in a retirement account for the... uh, you know, that that working interest, 10% working interest and the, the, I forget the name, the Bronco prospect, the Bronco prospect. You can still qualify for that, but you have to get a letter from uh, your broker, Schwab, they'll probably charge you, saying that the shares qualify. In other words, that the shares are real, basically. But it it can be done. Uh, I don't know how much money they want to move it. My opinion, anything up to a hundred dollars. I w- in my case it was sixty dollars. But if it's a hundred or eighty, I would probably still say, ah, oh, darn it, I don't want to do it, but I'm going to. But five hundred, three hundred, two hundred, eight hundred, and all those numbers I think is are preposterous. You do have your certificates. Bravo. Bravo. I have mine somewhere here. I'm going to send them in uh, at some point. But I don't feel a rush because I think there is going to be this cooperation between NextBridge and the 
transfer agent for quite some time. Uh, but you're, it, it, anyway, I think it's great to have the certificates. Uh, take a picture of them, upload it. it. You know, if you lose them, all you need is the certificate number. And, and AST already has it registered. So it's not like you have to prove it that you have them. I think it's great. I think it's great, Skydog, that you did that. Yeah, Stan, I, I know it. Is that the question? Do I know it? Yeah, sure, I know it. That was easy. Uh, okay. The toll-free number for the transfer agent is... Well, now, wait a minute. Are you talking about Nextbridge or GTII? Uh, anyway, I'll give it... I'll give you... For Nextbridge, the transfer agent is 1-800-937-5449. 1-800-937-5449. Or you can call directly at 718-921-8124. 718-921-8124. You can email them at help, A-S-T, at equinity.com. And equinity is spelled equi, like in equities, and nitty, like in nitty. Uh, now, let me look for GTII in case you were asking about that. Not private. Oh, Lordy. Oh, I see what I did wrong. Okay. Um, investor relations. Click here. Warrants have expired. Blanket letter, letter to brokers. Find the transfer agent. Ah. Okay, let's see here. Okay, so, no, that's wrong. It's a long letter. <clears throat> Liberty stock transfer. So that's the name of the transfer agent. Okay, let me try. Ah, here we go. It's Liberty Stock Transfer Stand for GTII. They're in, in uh, New Jersey. The phone number for Liberty Stock Transfer is 732-372. 0707 and you can email them at inbox inbox at liberty stock transfer.com liberty stock transfer.com inbox at liberty stock transfer.com the phone number for liberty is 732-372-0707 732-372-0707 
732-372-0707. Yeah, RW, I got to follow up on it too. I got a little worked up with Bill Cooper, but I, it wasn't directed at Bill Cooper specifically. It's just my general frustration with the two things that people do to themselves. One, they feel like, oh, I've lost everything. I, no, I don't think so. You've lost the ability to have liquidity. I can understand that. And a lot of people need their money. Uh, and uh, I also understand that. But I, I think there's value that has been created, and it's significant in uh, Nextbridge. There's risk. It's oil and gas. There's always risk. But I think there's been value created, significant value. And then secondly, this idea of when's, when are they going to have a resolution? It just kind of has gotten to me over the last week or so. and. A couple of months ago for myself, I'm thinking, why am I waiting? Why don't I just take take just take it into my own hands? But I'm, you know, I'm unique in that I like the idea of being in a private oil and gas company, particularly one. Uh, I, I've never met Greg McCabe, but what has it been? About two and a half years, three years overall talking about it that i have anyway and then i was in torchlight before uh i trust greg mccabe and so i'm i'm very happy to be in a private company with him so i age is just a number so should i act my age not my shoe size And should my shoe size be quoted in European sizes or U.S. sizes? Yeah, I wouldn't. I've never been to the Philippines. I wouldn't mind visiting. And... Uh, I have such a naive view of love. I just, I, I guess I'm just naive about it. Wow, RW. It's a good boy. I was walking my dog today. And this woman came up, she had two dogs, and she said, hi, Lucky, hi, Lucky. And she was wearing a hat, so I didn't quite recognize her. But she knelt down and said hi to Lucky. He was so happy to see her. And then she started crying, tearing up. And she said, I'm sorry. I'm just so happy to see him. He's such a good dog, and I missed him. You guys haven't been in lately. And it's driving me crazy because I don't, know where she works but she was so moved by seeing lucky boy and uh he was happy too anyway that's how i feel like love is supposed to be i didn't know i was going to get lucky i went to a party at uh um level two um I think that's what it was called. Level three. I can't, I can't remember now. Anyway, in Georgetown, a nice elite place downstairs. And uh, they were having fashions for paw, fashion for paws party. All these models each had a, each had a dog and he came up to me. And anyway, I just feel like that's how it's supposed to be. Something that set up by God, by good. Mm. The, the key is to stay young rw that's the key 
and stay in. Oh, I know one thing I got worked up on. I asked him yesterday. It was the um, question about, I think it was Little Green Candle, who's terrific. It was a question just kept coming up about uh, uh, NASDAQ halting trading from 514 to 7 in the morning on Monday. And I got a little snappy on that because to me, so what? But then I realized after we signed off, I mean, it's a legitimate question. Why did they do it? Why it never happened? It's unusual. But to me at the time, I was like, they got it trading by seven. You had two hours, two and a half hours to trade. What's the big deal? I remember that one. I I probably came across the wrong way on that one. But anyway, it was it was a valid question. There was another one where the only question, stupid question is an unasked question or something like that and had me there. That's what I did, Sky Dog, and that's the ones I'm waiting for. But we'll see if I get them. I don't know. Um, hey, Dadeev. See, that I don't think they should charge you, John. Uh, my opinion. <laughs> they haven't mentioned it to me. Uh, they just wanted the form, but I'm sure they'll come up with that. I don't think they should be able to charge you for that dividend. On the other hand, on the other hand, if you think about it, they may have this omnibus certificate sitting somewhere at DTC in New York in their name. They have to send a FedEx to the transfer agent, get it changed, and then the transfer agent has to send it to either Schwab or back to that same place. That may be two FedEx packages. That's 80 bucks. Yeah, that's a good point. They want us to sell. That's a good point. <laughs> I wonder why. That's. I mean, I think $80 is defensible if it's for the reason I just described. I wonder why they wouldn't give it to you. Lake Las Vegas in Henderson. I want to go in age 25 and up. No, I'm just kidding. I'll look it up. I'll look it up. Lake Las Vegas. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. So if we come to the end, 512, I'll try to wait three more minutes. Um, we, now we have to pray for these people killed in Moskva. That's terrible, and and in La Paz, Bolivia, and uh, oh, I wanted to show you this. I'll use it tomorrow, but let me see if I can add it today. Uh, or or I'll use it Monday. Uh, Got to find it. And it may not be coming up. The spinning wheel of death. Oh, here, it might be coming up. Might be coming up. There's moose.
Yeah. All right. Well, I'll give it a second while we while we look. Uh, while we signed off, because I want to. This is a little bit of a. Let's see it yet. <coughs> a little bit of a. Dedication, I guess. I can find it. Oh, there it is. I wonder why it's not. Doesn't make sense to me. It's just a photograph. H E I C. What does H E I C mean? High efficiency image file format. So what is, why can't it be JPEG? I don't understand it. All right, so maybe next week, we'll just do it next week. Yeah, we'll just have to, do, I don't know what it, why H, why it comes out at H E I C. I guess I can show you what I was gonna show you. This was what I was going to show you. I see you can't see it. It's hard to see. Anyway, I'll get it up. I'll I'll get that up for next time. I don't know why it's in an H E I C file. Everything changes. Uh, all right. So I'm. Um, um, you know, we'll pray for peace around the world. Uh, pray for Lou and his family. Pray for Jenny L. Pray for each of you. And uh, let's maybe there'll be a breakthrough here soon. And thank you, everyone, for signing in. Um, I'm sorry I didn't get ham on, but it was my fault. I I asked him, but I I did. I waited too late. And maybe I'll come on over the weekend or or do something. But uh, until Monday, for sure, I wish everyone well and, uh, and uh, you know, wish you peace, love, and happiness. Cheers. <laughs>